This is a time lap of testing for my rigging system. This is an anthropomorphic character. This is basically for testing in Unreal. Essentially, this character is for tool development around the hair system in Unreal. This character is very rough. The topology and modeling at the moment are not particularly good, but I can think about things like look dev and refinement of topology if the prototype actually works out. This is not really an auto rigging system. Essentially, the skeleton is reposable and I can update the skeleton. The main point of this system is to have the rig adjustable at any point in the pipeline. This way I can iterate on the character's design and I can update the rig throughout production. I do not have to rebuild the rig at any point. So I finished laying out the skeleton, I'm now going to add some name attributes. These are basically for separating elements for rigging. I want to set up the eyes and teeth as rigid geometry, which is fixed to a single joint. I want to have these evaluated separately from the deformable geometry. The mesh should now be weighted and I can start updating the weights. I'm going to use a capture override node to specify the head. The head and the jaw is the one place which biharmonic capture will always get wrong. We will always need to repaint these areas. The biharmonic capture by itself will almost never be perfect, but it is good enough for most of the body and it's good enough for prototyping, so I'm only going to focus on the jaw at the moment. I'll create an override for the jaw as well as the head. I can select some individual points, then I can grow the selection, and this will give me some proper weighting on the jaw, which will allow me to open the jaw more easily, and this will make it easier to paint the weights on the jaw and the mouth. I'll connect this to a bone deform node so I can see what the deformation is. At this point I needed to restart Houdini as the weights weren't working properly. And I can now get a capture layer paint node and I can start painting the weights on the jaw. For the most part I'm painting the jaw weights onto points and then I'm smoothing out these weights. The standard visualizations for weights are not actually good for painting weights. I will change this visualization so that I'm isolating the individual joint I will also change the visualization to be black and white so I can get a better idea of how the deformation is actually working. 
The colored visualizations can be useful, but it's generally harder to see how the deformation actually looks. The teeth are not following the jaw properly, so I'll need to update my stash input. Next, I can generate the proxy geometry. I'm generating the proxy geometry procedurally based off the weights. I haven't updated the weight influences yet. Since this is a game rig, we should not have more than four joints influencing a point. We should also normalize the weights after weight painting. I now have working proxy geometry. I'll delete the color attribute from my proxy geometry. I can now work on the export. I'll export the character with a name and a version number, and I can perform the export itself. We'll be exporting the proxies, we'll be exporting the weighted mesh, and we'll be exporting the skeleton. I can now start building the rig itself. First I want to get my files. I'll not embed these into the rig itself yet. I will not import any separate control sets. I can update the visibility settings and I should now have all the controls attached to the rig. I can now add the display and we can view the rig either as the default mesh or as the proxies. As you can see the weights are far from perfect, but for prototyping exact weights do not really matter. The results here should be good enough to block out basic animation. They should also be good enough to get decent results from testing for hair and for cloth. The IKFK matching scripts are working properly as well. So the rig is now working and I can now set up my export and my level of detail. This character is not particularly detailed, so the level of details make reasonably large changes to the topology. I'm now going to paint the areas where I want to retain detail for the character. 
For the higher level of details, I want to make sure that I'm maintaining my joints. I also want to retain detail on the mouth. Basically, you want more detail wherever there will be deformation. So another place where we'll have a lot of deformation will be the fingers. We also want to maintain detail on the neck and the eyes. For the moment I'll be more loose with my weights as my meshes get less detailed. For my medium level of details I want to retain facial features as well. We will always want to maintain our joints as these can lead to the greatest change in silhouette and it's when the silhouette changes that we see popping. One of the big advantages of doing LODs procedurally is that it does preserve the silhouette. When I get to the lowest level of details, I just want to focus on maintaining detail in the body instead of in the head, as we do not want to have too much extra detail going into things like the mouth. I can then set export parameters. The first one will be the character's name. I'll need to set the export directory. I can add a version number for the character as well. I can then export. The way you export things will differ based off the engine. For example, Unity will handle LODs based off mesh names and is generally reasonably easy, while Unreal will only really import LODs for static meshes. So I'll do a basic test for Unreal. I'll just bring in LOD0 at the moment. With Unreal, I've exported all of the LODs separately. In Unreal, you generally have to set up LODs for deformed meshes manually. Unreal only really supports import of LODs with static meshes. We should usually get some warnings on an import. Most of these aren't a big deal. An example would be smoothing groups, which are actually related to Max. Next, I'll do a basic import test for Unity. The main thing that I want to test with Unity is that I'm getting all of my LODs working straight away, and just to make sure that there are no errors with the importing to Unity. And that should set up this rig. I can now use it for prototyping features and for testing animation.